Over the next few minutes, we will see and discuss a method for intubating rats that is easy to learn, fast, and minimally traumatic. All of the separate elements of the technique can be found in the published literature, and the method has been used successfully at St. Louis University and elsewhere by technicians and investigators for some years. With our help, Hallowell EMC has assembled two convenient kits, including custom-made components to make intubation of rats and mice a much more manageable task. Because the equipment needed varies somewhat between rats and mice, Hallowell has provided a separate rat pack and a mouse pack which contain the appropriate equipment for each species. The rodent work stand allows you to securely hold the animal in a comfortable position as you perform the intubation. Intubation requires only a few seconds, so it is important to have everything ready before you start. This might be a good place to mention anesthesia. A fairly deep plane of anesthesia is needed for safe intubation. The rat in this demonstration was anesthetized with a ketamine xylazine combination, although many other drugs could have been used. With practice, inhalation anesthesia is also feasible. 2% plain lidocaine is used to provide local anesthesia to the cords. Because Hallowell EMC does not have a pharmacy license, this item will not be in the rat pack when you receive it. However, a space for it is reserved in the box with a label giving the stock number and the 800 number of Webster Veterinary Supply. About three-tenths of a cc is drawn into a one cc syringe. This volume is sufficient to expel the air in the applicator needle and to fill it with lidocaine so that we can deliver one or two controlled drops. The endotracheal tube is a clear 14 gauge catheter. In most rats of greater than 200 grams, the tube will not be too long. However, it should be checked to be sure that it will not extend beyond the thoracic inlet. If necessary, the tube should be shortened. In any event, a 45 degree bevel should be cut using a sharp blade. The upper tube seen here is cut correctly with a smooth rounded tip which will pass easily through the cords. The lower tube has been trimmed to a sharp point. This shape is traumatic and should not be used. Once the tube is ready, the umbilical tape which will be used to secure the tube should be tied to the catheter hub. A hole is provided in a work stand to hold the tape container. The tube is then placed over the guide wire, making sure that it is loosely fitted to the syringe hub so that it can be easily advanced once the guide wire is in place. The guide wire is adjusted using the syringe plunger. It must be long enough to reach at least the midpoint of the trachea, but should not reach the bifurcation. The speculum is now placed on the otoscope with the cutaway portion facing the operator's dominant hand. The speculum is shown here correctly positioned for a right-handed operator. Remember that the handle of the otoscope will be up, not down, when it is used. The speculum is specially molded with a cutaway portion and is autoclavable. It will fit either a Welsh Allen or an MDS operating otoscope head. The otoscopes and handles do not come with the intubation pack because many of you already own one or both. If you do not, they are available from Hallowell EMC. Now we are ready to intubate the rat. The animal is placed supine on the stand, as shown. The body positioner bars are adjusted to stabilize the rat and prevent it from rolling from side to side. The incisor loop is placed over the upper incisors and secured under the stand. The stand is tilted to 45 degrees where the magnetic strips will hold it in place. A cotton swab is placed under the tongue and rolled towards the operator, withdrawing the tongue from the mouth. Make sure that the otoscope light is on and, with your hand braced against the stand, insert the blade slowly into the mouth parallel with a hard palate, or the stand, until you can clearly see the cords. At this point, the swab can be removed and the lidocaine applicator inserted at the side of the mouth and advanced towards the cords as shown. If the cords are not clearly seen, 
slight pressure applied to the soft palate with the lidocaine applicator will often bring them into view. One or two drops of lidocaine are applied and a few seconds are allowed for it to take effect. The guide wire is then inserted through the cords. The speculum is withdrawn and the tube is gently advanced through the cords and into the trachea. The tube should be advanced until the ties are behind the upper incisors. At this point, the stand can be lowered, the tooth loop removed, and the dental mirror provided in the pack can be used to confirm successful intubation. The fogging seen in time with respiration indicates that the tube is correctly placed. If the tube has been misplaced, a second attempt can be made. However, repeated attempts will lead to trauma with swelling and respiratory compromise. Following a failed second attempt, it is safer to allow the animal to recover and try again another day. The rat is carefully turned to the prone position. The ties are secured behind the whiskers and over the nose. There is some risk of extubation when the ties are secured, so it is wise to again confirm intubation before connecting the rat to a breathing circuit.